Do you have an autistic person in your life? Maybe you're married to an autistic person, or you have an autistic partner, an autistic friend, an autistic family member, an autistic child. Well, on this video, I'm gonna explore the theory that the autistic person in your life is living with a wounded inner child. And we'll chat about how that wounded inner child can impact the relationships the autistic person in your life is having with not only you, but really everybody in that person's life. So let's go. Hey, I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy. Now, since my diagnosis as being autistic later in life, I've devoted my time to advocating for the autistic community. And I do that through my blogs, podcasts, and these YouTube videos. And it's all done with one goal in mind, that's raising the level of understanding, appreciation, and acceptance of the autistic community. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in learning more about, I'd absolutely appreciate it if you haven't already to consider subscribing to my YouTube channel simply by clicking that subscribe button and ringing the notifications bell, not only will you never miss another video, but more importantly, you'll help me reach even more people on the planet and raise that level of understanding and acceptance of autistic people. So your support is priceless to me and thank you so much to those that have already taken the time to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also check me out on the social. So if you wanna connect and say, hey, you'll find me on Facebook. Just follow the Orion Kelly page on Facebook. You'll also find me on other platforms, including Instagram, Twitter, and for some more short, quirky videos, feel free to check me out on TikTok. You've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Reach out, say hey, and check out my website, orionkelly.com.au. Now, my website has everything, okay? You'll see all the blogs, all the podcasts, stuff about me, and you can reach out and say hey and send me a message. So go and check out my website, orionkelly.com. .au. Okay, so let's start off by talking through what is the wounded inner child theory? What does it all mean? Well, in essence, the wounded inner child theory suggests that an autistic adult, or really any adult for that matter, is somehow negatively or permanently impacted or affected by certain treatment, behavior, or experiences growing up. Put differently, certain things that occurred during your childhood that were negative things have impacted you to the extent that they're still inside you as an adult, hence the wounded inner child theory. So I think there's a real strong connection here between autistic children growing up to be adults with wounded inner childs inside them. And in addition to that, I think this video hopefully will be really important not only for autistic people, but also for people with autistic people in their lives and maybe you're married to an autistic person. Maybe your partner's autistic or your friend or your family member. I think this will hopefully help you to understand, I guess, where they're coming from. So the starting point is, as a result of those particular things occurring during an autistic person's childhood, they are forever burdened with a sense of things, including abandonment. So when I say burdened, I mean like a constant fear of abandonment, a constant fear of rejection, a constant fear of criticism, a constant fear of being demeaned, being looked down upon, being treated badly. And maybe this is or isn't relatable to you, potentially as a neurotypical non-autistic partner or friend or family member. Well, that fear of criticism inside the autistic person in your life may lead them to become, in your eyes, constantly defensive, right? Generally defensive. You might say something, anything, to the autistic person in your life and automatically they may already, without even really hearing it, jump down the throat of the person saying something in a defensive manner because when you say something to them, they've heard it as purely a criticism and bang, it's all that attack. So I think there's two sides. The fear of criticism and abandonment and rejection and being demeaned, those kind of things, I think they manifest in an overall sense of defensiveness, of combativeness in the autistic person in your life. 
that wounded inner child becomes very defensive and combative. And I think on the flip side of that, the fear of abandonment can also lead to a kind of quiet compliance. Does that make sense? So I get that as an autistic person, I know this is me, and I get that the autistic person in your life may come across very defensive and combative, but then at other times they may come across very quietly compliant. In other words, not combative and defensive. Because at certain phases, it's like I'm being attacked. And then other phases, it's like, I think this person's going to abandon me or reject me. So I better just smile and nod, or I better just comply or just stay quiet. Right? There's, so it's actually a vicious battle for the wounded inner child. There's two conflicting responses there. I better comply like I've always been told to. So people won't abandon me or reject me. But then in having all these fears from childhood, I'm always defensive and combative. It's, it's a real battle going on inside. Think of it like this, and I hope this is useful. The autistic person in your life has been pre-programmed to always feel criticized. Pre-programmed to always feel like we're being attacked or demeaned. Or rejected. In addition to that, you could also say we've been pre-programmed to feel like we will be abandoned at any moment. And before we get to the actual causes of creating this wounded inner child, the causes that occur during childhood, just a couple of things, a couple of results, a couple of manifestations you may be able to relate to from having an autistic person in your life with this wounded inner child. We may feel the need to defend ourselves straight away when you say something or attack back at what you've just said or argue the point until we feel like we have to prove you wrong and prove us right. It can also manifest in a way where we feel the need to prove our worth on a daily basis by solving your problems or providing unsolicited advice. And this is something that's big for me. When my wife talks to me a lot of times, I just assume if she's talking to me in a way where she's stirring an experience that was negative or open-ended, she's telling me this so I can jump in at any time and find a solution, create a solution and give her advice. Now, of course, that's not the case. I've been told and I had to actually have this conversation and be told by a psychologist that, believe it or not, my wife and neurotypical people sometimes like to just vent. They like to share problems, not to have those problems solved, but to just talk about them. But you don't want anything from me. Like, I can't work it out. Anyway, we do those things, those solving problems and providing advice. Again, not about you. It's to prove our worth after a childhood of feeling like there is no worth. It's the wounded inner child trying to help ourselves say, hey, I'm useful. And the last thing I'd say about what is the wounded inner child theory and how does it manifest a specific example? This is for relationships. So if you have a partner who's autistic and let's say you might be married or in a relationship with an autistic person and you're not autistic, or it could be the reverse on the way. For me, as an autistic person, at the first sign of any disagreement or any argument or any kind of negative result that comes about between my wife and I, at the first sign of those disagreements or arguments, I just assume that my wife will leave me that my wife will divorce me, that my wife no longer wants me, likes me, let alone loves me. And you can branch that out at the first sign of disagreements and arguments and those types of negative experiences happening with friends or family members. You automatically think they're no longer going to be your friends or your family are no longer going to want to talk to you or be around you. That's just a, that is the initial response. Bang. Oh, my wife. Disagreement. She doesn't like me. She's going to divorce me. She's going to leave me. And remember, when I say all these things, you have to see them through the lens of an autistic person who has an autistic brain. Okay, I know what you're thinking. And yes, you're right. You just witnessed a legitimate autistic blackout. It's not. <laughs> they don't exist. Anywho, let's move on to looking at the causes of the wounded inner child theory. Okay, so in essence, let's talk about the things that actually wound your inner child as you grow up, as you go through childhood. And as I talk about some of the causes to this theory, I'm gonna add my own personal experiences to give you, I guess, a real actually autistic perspective on how this could have impacted me and 
my wounded inner child. And I guess it's also important to point out if you're a neurotypical non-autistic person watching this video because you may have an autistic partner, you may be married in a relationship, you may have an autistic friend or family member, basically any of these causes I'm about to talk about occurring during their childhood uh, could be the reason why you have an autistic partner with a wounded inner child. The first cause of a wounded inner child, you were physically punished. During your childhood, you are punished. All kids are punished, but your punishment was at times physical. So it doesn't necessarily mean as a child your physical punishment was just an odd smack here or there like almost all kids of our generation. It means you know, other forms of physical punishment, but we'll leave it at that. Putting aside physical punishment, another cause can be just general forms of punishment, and that can be punishment or being put down for acting differently or speaking to people differently. Now that can also incorporate speaking up to people or speaking up about things, or I guess in essence, just acting in a way that neurotypical non-autistic kids don't tend to act. And that cause can lead on to another cause, which is growing up as a child and being shamed by your friends or family. Okay, so one example is you were shamed or put down because you just spoke up or spoke differently or acted differently. And I guess that comes down to parents of those children probably just feeling powerless, feeling awkward, feeling embarrassed, feeling uncomfortable. And if you have a child who just isn't acting like other children, you're obviously gonna feel a bit odd, right? And it's gonna be embarrassing or awkward. So those feelings are valid, but it, it doesn't and shouldn't lead to you then going on to shaming your children for making you feel like that. We're talking about kids born, whether they're diagnosed or not, with a neurological developmental disability. They've got an autistic brain. You can't shame kids for being born with an autistic brain. Of course, we do get shamed. Autistic kids growing up get shamed by friends, family, teachers, all of them. Name them. It happens. And that can lead to a wounded inner child. Another cause is being told almost constantly through your childhood that your behavior is just not acceptable. You being you, not acceptable. You act like yourself, I'm sorry, that's not acceptable. You can't behave like that. That's not an acceptable way to talk, behave, act, interact. Which as a child is a pretty horrible thing to hear repeatedly. It's, no matter what I do, just being me isn't acceptable. Now when we defined earlier in the video what the wounded inner child theory is, it talked a lot about criticism. So clearly another cause of the wounded inner child is being criticized regularly. And again, these all intertwine really, don't they? Being criticized is not much different to being told that's not acceptable or being put down or being shamed. But this, like we talked about again, when we defined it, being criticized regularly as a child is clearly going to lead you to feel like for the rest of your life, because you have a wounded inner child, a child who was criticized through their whole childhood, that you are always going to be criticized. And therefore, you must always expect, no matter what people say to you, what they're saying to you is negative and you must defend yourself, or you must attack back or prove them wrong. It's a sense that you are always being criticized to some degree, and that's coming from being criticized literally as a child. And just digging a little bit deeper, just for a second, I don't wanna to get too deep here, but as part of the wounded inner child theory, they talk about this, the kind of, I guess, the constant criticism and all these negative repercussions of being shamed or put down, can lead to a thing that they talk about being a cognitive bias, uh, a way of interpreting words from other people that are neutral words, so words that have no negative meaning, interpreting in a way that makes them negative. So obviously, if you have that cognitive bias from having a wounded inner child and being criticized and put down through childhood for being different, you're clearly going to always interpret neutral words in a negative way, like they are negative words. You just hear them and you may, you may have this experience. You may have an autistic person in your whole life who always misinterprets what you say. No matter what you're saying, they hear something that is completely different. It frustrates the hell out of you. And for them, they always think you're attacking them, but then but you're not attacking them. But then they hear it and this is, this is the answer I'm telling you. It's a cognitive bias they're interpreting, like me, neutral words in a negative way. Now, can, now okay, so we've established that, how that can make you feel frustrated, but imagine how they feel. Imagine how we feel. Imagine the high level of stress and anxiety if all words you hear 
with a wounded inner child from the way you were you know, raised or just your childhood in general has led you to hear neutral words in a negative way. Everything that you hear has to be some sort of negative meaning or criticism on you. As a child, autistic kids can also come across really spontaneous. Just spontaneously taking action, spontaneously wanting to do different and new things. No labels being put on this, I'm just saying another cause of the wounded inner child can be punishing autistic kids, diagnosed or not, for being spontaneous. Being punished for being spontaneous. Another cause can be being punished as a child for simply showing strong emotions. And if we can read between the lines, punishing an autistic child for meltdowns and shutdowns and sensory overloads. So it's not uncommon for autistic kids, diagnosed or not diagnosed, to be punished regularly as a child for showing strong emotions. Because people think autistic people are robots. Well, we're absolutely not clearly. If you know an autistic person, you know that's not the case. But when you are punished as a child for having these strong emotions, and keeping in mind, as an adult, I still struggle to identify and express and understand my own emotions. Imagine if you're a kid, you're being punished for something you, you don't even you don't even really understand and you can't really express and explain and interpret. And the last couple of causes of a wounded inner child, before I get onto things that you can do if you have an autistic person in your life to help them with their wounded inner child, the last couple of causes are things like being labeled a problem child. Growing up as an autistic child, diagnosed or not diagnosed, being labeled as a problem child by not only your own parents and family and friends, but also teachers, or members of the community, this is clearly not gonna end well. If just being you on a daily basis automatically provides you with a label as just a problem child, you know, it's clearly gonna contribute to that wounded inner child growing up later in life. And building on that, and the last causes that I wanna talk about, is just the sheer reality that growing up as an autistic child, if you were bullied, ostracized, teased, or rejected by your peers, by other kids your age, or you know, other children in general, that's clearly going to contribute to that wounded inner child, and that's clearly going to impact you later in life. These are all the things that add up to creating that pre-programmed autistic partner or spouse or friend or family member who just seems pre-programmed to always feel like they're being criticized or attacked or demeaned. Okay, so there's an autistic person in your life who you feel has a wounded inner child. So what can you do? Maybe you wanna know what you can do for yourself if you're an autistic person, or maybe you know what you can do for your partner. Either way, what you can do for starters is understand and accept that they are different. They were born with a different brain, an autistic brain. They're autistic, they're different. What's with the expectations that they're gonna be neurotypical? They're not. Also, the traumas and treatments that trigger the wounded inner child in the autistic person in your life are always going to be different to every other person. Okay, so it doesn't have to be an autistic person to have a wounded inner child. I'm just talking about it through an autistic lens because I'm autistic and I'm giving you my perspectives. But remember, everyone's childhood is different. We have different traumas, different treatments, different triggers. Acknowledge that as well. Opening up conversations about those potential treatments and traumas and triggers may be beneficial, may be therapy with a healthcare professional may be beneficial. Either way, whether it's a conversation between you and your partner or with a therapist, understanding where those triggers come from is clearly going to be beneficial because you can both understand the behaviors that trigger them and how to navigate that. But I think most importantly, and this is really important for neurotypical, non-autistic partners, spouses, whatever you want to call it, people who have an autistic partner who they feel has a wounded inner child. It's important to understand, I've said this a few times, this is not about you. I know it's all directed at you. You might just go to say some completely neutral, normal, maybe even positive thing to your autistic partner and bang, they feel offended or being attacked or criticized and they defend or attack back or they argue with you, which in my opinion is not an argument, but anyway, it's, it's me 
trying to gather more ideas or facts or information about what you're trying to say. Anyway, let's not get into an argument about arguments. <laughs> now, wounded inner child causes the autistic person in your life to experience the world very differently to you. I genuinely believe there's an inner child in all of us. And for some, sure, experiences in the past have caused that inner child to be a wounded inner child. And that can affect relationships for the rest of your life. So I hope this video has helped you help relationships between you and the autistic person in your life, or as an autistic person, help relationships with non-autistic people in your life. Either way, thank you so much for watching this video. I'd be delighted if you consider subscribing to my YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. Until my next video, thanks again for watching and we'll talk soon.